I'm Mike, and today, female erectile dysfunction. How, first and foremost, it is real. Also, how it is caused and how that same cause also leads to other closely related physical sexual issues. How it is invisible, and that is probably why it's eclipsed by male erectile dysfunction. How it is likely affecting more and younger people, and finally, some hope to possibly reverse it. Okay, I understand how this video's subject matter isn't for everybody. There might be some diagrams and charts that can make people feel uncomfortable. But let's be mature about this in the comments and I'm gonna try and stay serious. All right, let's do this I'm gonna pop on the green screen because charts and stuff Oh shit. In addition to just female erectile dysfunction, as I mentioned, we're gonna look at some wider issues that have the same cause, and they fall under the umbrella of female sexual arousal disorder, which falls under the even wider umbrella of just female sexual dysfunction, which also includes emotional and psychological aspects, which are another topic, mostly. From this study, here's what we are talking about specifically. Common symptoms associated with female sexual disorder include diminished vaginal lubrication, pain and discomfort upon intercourse, decreased sense of arousal and difficulty in achieving orgasm. So we're talking about the pleasure of half of planet Earth here. All right, now let's look at female erectile dysfunction specifically, which is more commonly referred to as clitoral erectile insufficiency. The clitoris is certainly one of the most underrepresented organs in history, oftentimes not having a full description in textbooks, and it wasn't even fully mapped until 1998. But I just so happen to have a life-size 3D printed model of a clitoris here. 90% of it is internal, so it probably doesn't look that familiar. Yes, it is painted gold. Because the clitoris is homologous to the penis, meaning they originated from the same tissue, it's no surprise that the principle of clitoral erection is similar to that of a penile erection, as this study mentions an inflow of arterial blood that is held there. Now you might be thinking, it looks like a penguin with balls for a body, but these bulbs are not homologous to testicles. They are actually homologous to the base of the penis and like the clitoris itself, becomes erect, they do inflate, and they are on either side of the canal as this diagram shows. Now it goes without saying that clitoral erection is a natural important process that affects female pleasure, but like in many cases of erectile dysfunction in the penis, the arteries to the clitoris can also become clogged or suffer from compromised artery function, period. Like lack of dilation. From this study, quote, there is a growing body of evidence that women with sexual dysfunction will commonly have physiologic abnormalities such as vasculogenic female sexual dysfunction contributing to their overall sexual health problems. This is clitoral, but also has to do with the general vaginal blood flow with vaginal engorgement. Quote, these syndromes exist when during sexual stimulation, abnormal arterial circulation into the vagina or clitoris, usually from atherosclerotic vascular disease, interferes with normal vascular physiologic processes. In addition to diminishing orgasm and sensation, we are astoundingly also talking about impeding lubrication. Now, I virtually never used Wikipedia here, but they simply phrased this basic fact most clearly, quote, Plasma seepage from vaginal walls due to vascular engorgement is considered to be the chief lubrication source. So since lubrication is also a vascular process, a lack of lubrication can be a vascular issue. Now, in my male erectile dysfunction video, I compared a heart artery to a penile artery, and because the penile artery is so much smaller, it can become clogged much sooner, which is why it's considered an early warning sign of cardiovascular disease, the canary in the coal mine, if you will. But compared to that penile artery, this is the approximated size of one of the main arteries in the clitoris, an order of magnitude smaller again. In fact, this study actually referred to the clitoris's structure as, quote, microarchitecture. So it's no surprise that as this study mentioned, female sexual dysfunction may also be considered an early warning sign for cardiovascular disease. Noting that same disease connection, these researchers, this is a bit of a sensitive subject, no graphic imagery though, these researchers decided to feed rabbits cholesterol and watch their clitorises clog and their genital blood flow decrease by about a third. I do not believe it was necessary to do this to prove the point, and I do not support this research, but I do think it's valuable to expose what type of animal testing is being done nowadays. Now to get an idea of the state of reproductive arteries in women, here is a study that looked at women who had hysterectomies, not the healthiest subjects I know, but they give an idea. 
Among the 59 premenopausal women, 56% had inner artery wall thickening, about 40% had plaque in their arteries, and almost 4% had complex lesions in their uterine artery samples. And as you would expect, a higher cholesterol level was associated with thicker arteries. Cholesterol levels don't matter though. At this point, you might be thinking, okay, Mike, I get it, it's real. But seriously, atherosclerosis in rabbits and diseased women, most people definitely aren't having any of these problems. They're healthy, wrong. As this study mentions, fatty streaks, the early stages of atherosclerosis are found in the aortas, the main artery of virtually all children by the age of three. And this next study looked at how clogged the arteries of recently donated hearts were. These are from healthy donors with no symptoms who died of things like car accidents and the like. Looking at the younger hearts, quote, This study demonstrates that coronary atherosclerosis begins at a young age and that lesions are present in one of six teenagers. And looking at all of the hearts, over 200 hearts with an average donor age of about 33, an atherosclerotic lesion was present in over half of them. They conclude that the present study provides unequivocal in vivo evidence of atherosclerosis in young asymptomatic or symptomless individuals with no evidence of clinical coronary artery disease. If you have no symptoms and live in the Western world, this chart might be the best representation of whether or not you have atherosclerosis. The darker bar, the 0.5 millimeter threshold, indicates atherosclerosis. The lighter one, the 0.3 millimeter, means possible atherosclerosis. So where do you land? Over one third of the people in their 20s, where I am, had coronary atherosclerosis. And keep in mind, we are talking about those large heart arteries here. We are not talking about the microarchitecture of the clitoris. Okay, but does this atherosclerosis actually have a physical effect in humans, not just rabbits? We know it does in rabbits. And I wish I could just point to some massive study, at least measuring this. But as previous researchers have mentioned, there has been a dearth or scarcity of research concerning the physiology of female sexual dysfunction. But one shocking example of why this atherosclerosis does lead to negative physical effects is the spinal disc degeneration of teenagers. In general, from this study, we know that 80% of people with chronic lower back pain have severely clogged lower back arteries. So how prevalent is it in younger people? From this award-winning study looking at ages 11 to 16 years, in this age group, unequivocal findings of tissue degradation can be observed. Then things get worse as people age and decaying spinal cells are more frequent. So if we have a physical negative outcome from atherosclerosis in disc degeneration, even in teenagers, then you can bet that we have negative outcomes in genital blood flow from atherosclerosis as well, even in young women, and definitely getting worse as age goes on. It's also worth asking, is this vascular situation perhaps affecting women on some sort of spectrum? Like somebody might be 30% less sensitive, but not know that something is actually wrong. Furthermore, could these less severe effects be affecting the psychological and emotional states of women as well? Much like how this study mentions a physical reaction in terms of erectile dysfunction for males can create more anxiety and create a sort of cycle. So while this whole topic is largely separated from psychological female sexual dysfunction, there is no denying that they are connected. But now you might be wondering if all of this can be reversed, and I think a great place to look for answers is at males who have reversed their erectile dysfunction. If you have seen Forks Over Knives, you are probably familiar with this very elated gentleman. Anthony and the other male patients also noted another change. When you're a teenager, you see uh, a female and so on, it gets kind of excited. Raise the flag, I call it. This happened to us. The flag still rises. Using a whole food vegan diet, he was able to reverse his erectile dysfunction at his age, so it is possible. Simply put, arteries are arteries, and for the trillionth time in my videos, I'm gonna mention this study demonstrating clinically that a whole food vegan diet reverses cardiovascular disease. It unclogs arteries, here is after three and a half weeks, and here is after a few years. Another thing that helps is exercise for female blood flow. This study used Doppler ultrasound to measure clitoral blood flow. They found that, quote, in elite female athletes as compared with sedentary, healthy females, better clitoral blood flow and better sexual function were demonstrated. Which, if anything else, shows that you can be healthy and still have diminished blood flow. But you don't have to be an elite athlete. This study looked at interior artery wall thickness, a measure of atherosclerosis. Here are the arteries of people on an omnivorous diet. 
here are the arteries of marathon runners, better, and here are the vegans, a little bit better, but roughly equal to marathon runners. Now I actually wanna look at the case of one of my friends, my friend who inspired me to actually investigate this phenomenon further. She will remain anonymous, but let's give her a call. Hello. Hey, anonymous lady. Hi, <laughs> hey. how are you? Good, great. So we're here to talk about sex. I guess the question is, how was your sexual vegan transition? Um, pretty great. Um, I had never come to orgasm through penetration ever in my life until I went vegan. I always thought sex was just a little bit boring. I was didn't I was like yay or nay about it. And, but then the very first time I ever had sex as a vegan, I <laughs> you know had this amazing orgasm during yeah. penetrative sex, and I was like. I had no idea what was happening. I was shocked. <laughs> okay, again, let's do this. What's happening? <laughs> so I guess my question is, because I know we're going to have a lot of skeptical people watching this. Was there any other, like, major change? Did you start exercising a ton? Do you have any crazy emotional changes that could have then made, made you orgasm for the first time in your life during sex? No, I, because I wasn't doing any extra physical activity. Mm -hmm. Like nothing, none of my physical activity had become more strenuous, but I honestly wasn't working out that much. I just had changed my diet. So I think it was, you know, the vegan diet helping me to be more hydrated, uh, increase my blood flow. My body was anatomically responding really positively to um, my new diet and any like kind of maybe blockage I had had prior to that was opened up Sweet. to the diet. All right, thanks so much for talking, Miss Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Have a good one. Hey, Bye, too. viewers. There you have it. And I want to share that that whole experience happened in her 20s. And one quick point that I want to cover, which is also an anecdote, is that a lot of female sexual dysfunction has to do with a lack of desire. And as this woman who went vegan said, her previous non-existent sex drive returned with a vengeance. And this likely lands in a whole nother realm, the realm of how diet affects sex hormones, which will be another video for a completely different time later. To summarize all of this, the clitoris and other female genital organs are prone to artery clogging, which has a variety of negative impacts on sexual health, such as clitoral erection, sensation, diminished orgasm, and even less lubrication. We reluctantly have an animal model demonstrating this. We also have widespread atherosclerosis in young, healthy subjects. We can demonstrate clogged reproductive arteries in many women. And we see other physical negative consequences of atherosclerosis, even in teens. In the end, I know it's hard to believe that we don't know about this already very widely, but I do hope that I made the case that this is real and should be on our radars. Finally, one of my next five Patreon supporters will receive the golden clitoris of knowledge if they want. If they don't want it, they can choose between maybe another 3D printed model like a cute pig or a vegan keychain. Lame. I will also randomly choose one of my current Patreon supporters and give them the same choice just to show them how much I love them. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe and share this video if it's not too controversial for your Facebook feed. We'll see. And I will see you in the next video.